we're on. Hello, everyone. We're coming live from Tim McLoon's Rum Runner in Seabright. Uh, on behalf of all of McLoon's restaurants, we hope you're doing well and everyone's healthy. Uh, today, we're going to do a simple dish, chicken cacciatore. We're going to be using chicken thighs, uh, one of my favorite cuts of meat, um, as far as chicken goes. Uh, very economical and super flavorful. Um, it's also great for, for even the poorest of cooks can't overcook this uh, wonderfully flavorful piece of chicken. So we're going to get started. Uh, we have a hot pan here uh, with some extra virgin olive oil in. Just coating the bottom. We're going to take our chicken thighs. These are boneless. If you care to use uh, chicken thighs on the bone, fantastic. If you care to use chicken breast, wonderful. You would have to adjust the cooking a little, um, but needless to say, it would be a wonderful dish uh, nonetheless. Chicken cacciatore is an Italian dish um, all over Italy. It's done in many different ways. Every region has a different way of doing this dish. Uh, within each region, every household has a different way of doing this dish. This is the way I learned it about 20 years ago. Uh, so I'm going to do it uh, in that in that style. Chicken cacciatore means in the style of the hunter. So there's your Italian lesson for the day. We literally seasoned our chicken thighs with some salt. Uh, if it looks a little chunky, I'm using Malden sea salt. It's one of my favorites. Uh, you can really feel it. Uh, chefs like to feel what they're seasoning with. Iodized salt tends to run through your fingers, and you don't really get a good grasp for it. Um, and that'll throw off your seasoning. So with that being said, we seasoned it with, with salt. Uh, we're gonna season it also with black pepper. I really like uh, larger grain black pepper. Uh, we're gonna do both sides. Okay. So now we have our seasoned chicken. We're going to go into a nice hot pan of extra virgin olive oil. Bear with me while I put my gloves on. Okay. So we have nice and hot oil. Please be careful when you do this. You also want your chicken breasts or thighs or whatever you're using, as dry as possible. Heat gingerly with your pan, tilt the oil away from you so it doesn't backsplash uh, up on you. Um, young cooks make that mistake a lot. Uh, this young, when this cook was young, his arms were covered with burns and cuts and every other little infection you can get from cooking. So, we're going to let these brown. You want to let your, you want to let anything that you're searing brown a little. Uh, that will develop complexities in taste and uh, in flavor. Texture as well. So, as we have that going, we're going to make some roasted potatoes as well. Roasted potatoes, I have baby red potatoes, uh, about two pounds of them. I'm going to drizzle them with extra virgin olive oil. I'm going to season them with salt. Fresh ground pepper. Michael, uh, your wife is saying it looks great, by the way. Oh, there's my lovely wife. And she's not complaining that I'm smoking up the uh, kitchen. A little joke that me and my lovely wife have amongst ourselves. When we first started dating, I used to cook for her, my wife Stephanie, and uh, she looked at me like I was absolutely out of my mind because I made such a mess when we cook when I cook. And after a while, I thought I was doing her a favor coming over and cooking for her. And uh, she said, No, 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 we can order out. That would be great. Because <laughs> um, she, she loathed the mess that I would make in her, in her kitchen. So I took her baby red bliss potatoes, 
I dress them with uh, extra virgin olive oil, salt, pepper, and a little parsley. They're going to go into a 350 degree oven for about a half an hour. Um, we're going to continue on this pack story. Steph says you still make a mess in the kitchen. Of course you do. But I have a wonderful sous chef that cleans up after me, my 11-year-old golden retriever daddy. Certainly you didn't think I would get a <laughs> not get him into this <laughs> this no. lesson one way or another. What about the cats? Uh, the cats are plentiful. <laughs> so, uh, now we're going to uh, prep a little. Someone asked me how to slice an onion. We took the ends off. We cut it in half. We're going to take the skin off. Distort it. You can save that for chicken stock if you like. Um, you don't have to throw it in the garbage. You can you can save it for a later episode. You know, you can throw it in the freezer with any other ends of vegetables, celery, onion, and carrots. We got a nice golden brown sear on these. We're gonna go back to our onion. We're gonna slice some thin. So there's our onion. It's amazing that I didn't cut myself. 1995, my first uh, job, I was working for a gentleman named John Nagel at the Sandpiper in Spring Lake. They asked me to cut an onion and I sliced myself with that, sliced uh, my finger open about six minutes into my first gift. So, he kept me on, so that was cool, and he's a good friend of mine. So, we browned this chicken. We're gonna just, we're going to take it out just for a quick minute. We got a little too much fat in this, so I ask you to be careful with this. We're going to discard this fat just a little bit. We're going to cut it by about half. So we have just a little fat left in there. We're going to start off with some garlic. We lightly smacked some cloves of garlic. We're going to put a little color on them and toast them. Now. Some people like to mince garlic. I prefer to just lightly smash it. Why? I like the flavor of garlic. And if you're not a garlic eater, you can certainly uh, discard the garlic and move it to the side as opposed to eating the whole, you know, eating it as it would be if it was minced. Also, mincing tends to want to burn a little quicker. So we don't want to do that. To the garlic, we're going to add some sliced onion. We have some very thin sliced onion. It's about one. With cooking, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You know, it could be a small onion. If you don't like onions, don't worry about it. Don't use the onion. If you want to use a leek, use a leek. If you want to use a shallot, use a shallot. We're going to continue with uh, some Julian red pepper, some Julian yellow pepper, and we're going to saute this rather quickly for a few minutes. Well, we have some beautiful colors in here. We're going to season this right now with a little salt, a little fresh craft black pepper. When I first started in the business, I loved watching cooking shows. It was the most amazing thing in the world. I've been watching for hours. I still do. I go to YouTube. I drive my wife crazy. I watch YouTube videos of like cooking shows from uh, the 1970s and 80s. Justin Wilson, one of my favorites, he did Cajun, and uh, he was. I, I, I could watch him every day, along with Julia Child, along with later on in the uh, in the 90s when I was a a really young cook, uh, Bobby Flay and Emma Lagasse and Molto Mario and. And uh, all those shows, they were just absolutely fantastic. So, I have my onions, my peppers, onions, and garlic sauteed. Uh, I'm going to take two sprigs of, parts of uh, rosemary. If you only have, um, if you only have dry rosemary at the house, great. You can use it. If you don't like rosemary, hey, it tastes too much like a Christmas tree, omit it. 
it's not like baking. Baking, everything has to be absolutely a science too. With cooking, it really can be a hodgepodge of whatever suits you. So we're gonna throw in this, rosemary, continue to sweat it. We're gonna use half a teaspoon of uh, dry oregano. Dry oregano, or oregano is one of the only herbs I like using dried. Italians tend to think that um, the fresh oregano bothers and agitates the stomach. They prefer it in, in, in the dry form. I don't know, you don't have to twist my arm. It works for me, so I continue to use it, you know? But there's not much critical thinking there, you know? So, hey, use dry oregano, you got it. Okay, so with that being said, I'm gonna use about eight, eight pieces of Italian whole peel tomato. I already crushed these by hand. If you only have crushed tomato, fantastic. If you, in the summer, when tomatoes are plentiful, and you want to use fresh tomatoes, great, but give them a rough chop. They're going to go right in. So we're doing this with this thing over roasted, uh, with roasted potatoes. If you want to use pasta, that's great. It would be fantastic over pappardelle or fettuccine. Wonderful. It would be great over rice or risotto, whatever works. We're gonna season again. We're gonna add a little white wine. We're gonna use a half cup of dry white wine. Whatever you're drinking is great. You're opening up, up a bottle after work. Um, before you have that first class, use it for your cooking. Whatever, whatever you're drinking will go really well with your food. If you prefer red wine, it's going to make the dish a little richer, but it's absolutely fine. We're going to burn this, some of this alcohol off. We're going to give it about 60 seconds or so, and then we're going to continue. All right, we do have a question. What's the biggest difference for you between cooking for one or two people as opposed to a whole restaurant, and how would this tutorial change? That's from Stephen Sengel. Uh, I love cooking at home for my wife, my family. Um, it's one of my favorite things in the world. Um, however, there's nothing I enjoy more. I must be a little crazy because I love working a Saturday night in July. It's it, it, The adrenaline you get is absolutely fantastic. And, uh, and I, it's, it's just, it's the best. So, and the back end of that question was? Um, how would this world change? How would this, how would this, you showing us how to cook for four people change if you're cooking for, like one person that night ordered this for? Ah, for one, you cut this in half, you know, yeah. of course. And, uh, you know, if we're cooking on a Saturday night in, in August, of course there's tricks that chefs take. And that might be another, uh, another episode. Steven's a good friend of mine. I went to CCD with him uh, for probably around fifth grade or so. And he, he went to St. Rose, I went to Walt Township. And he was all, he's always been one of the nicest guys you could ever meet, so. Uh, with that, we're gonna add chicken stock. Chicken stock, you can make it any time. You can buy your own. If you wanna buy a good chicken broth from Whole Foods or, or ShopRite or Pet Mart or whatever, making your own's fantastic. You know, take a chicken, um, uh, the, the bones off the chicken, put it in with a mirepoix of celery, onion, and carrot, uh, a couple of bay leaves, some cool water, bring it up, some peppercorns, maybe some parsley stems, bring it to a simmer, bring it to a boil, cut it to a simmer and let it go for like an hour, and strain it, and there's your chicken broth, and it freezes wonderful. So from here, we're gonna take our chicken, and we're going to put it back in. I think they have everything. So our chicken goes back in. And again, if you want to use chicken on the bone, that's fantastic. Makes for a richer dish. So this goes from here. We're gonna take it and put it into a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Uh, again, if you're using, if you're using thighs on the bone, it's gonna probably take a little bit longer, but don't, don't stress over that because chicken thighs, you really, really can't um, overcook. 
Uh, should you not have a saute pan that is large enough to fit in your oven, uh, you can go right to a baking dish, uh, and that would be easy. I hear, I guess, all the rage right now is crock pots. I would, I would assume you would, you could throw everything in to the crock pot. You might have to add a little bit more chicken stock, I would imagine, but you would just cook it through until it's, uh, you know, fork tender. So. Uh, I'm going to get ready for plating. I did do this dish a little, I did do it a little earlier, so it's ready. So our chicken's going to go into the oven for about 20 minutes. Our potatoes are going to go in more or less for a half an hour. Um, so now we're going to get ready to plate. All we're doing is mincing some Italian parsley. Italian parsley is the best parsley you can get. Um, they sell that curly parsley in the supermarket. It's absolutely horrific, don't use it. Use Italian parsley, it's got truly the most aromatic smell to it. Every one of the cooks that I've worked with probably can share a story with you as I take a, uh, a bunch of parsley and rip it in half and say, smell this, because it's got such a wonderful smell to it. And don't cut this as fine sitting there for an hour and making it into sawdust. You're gonna lose all your flavor. It's gonna to tend to smell like old mulch or something. So just cut it right before and you know, you're gonna be able to smell that aromatic uh, scent to the herb. So by the magic of Facebook and television or not television, we're going to plate the dish. Our chicken's been in for 20 minutes. Our potatoes have two. Now, we're going to start with the potatoes. A little trick at home. Take your, whatever you're cooking, at the end of it, drizzle with a little fresh extra virgin olive oil. A smell will come out of that, and an, aromat an aromatics will come out of that, a flavor that's absolutely fantastic. And it will really make your, your cooking really stand out. We're going to drizzle with a little parsley. Take it to the plate. We have our chicken cacciatore here. On a last note, we're going to hit it with just a little red pepper flake, about a half a teaspoon. I don't add it in the beginning because that will make the entire dish hot. If you add it at the very end, you'll get a little capricious uh, uh, heat element where maybe a bite is spicier than the other, and that's a little interesting, um, interesting to give your guests. So we're going to sprinkle that on. A little parsley. We're going to go to the plate. For those cooks out there that I've worked with, I know I would not accept plating at such a slow, methodical pace. I'd probably be telling you, come on, let's go, quick, pick it up. What? Come on a different time. So now we're going to put our chicken right on top. We have a little, a little rosemary. Interesting with any herb, if you use it in the front, you'll get a little muted taste of it. And then if you use it on the back, it's a, it's a really quick chef trick. Use it on the back and you get this bodacious 
freshness to it. And so there's a, there's a little duality to the taste, which is really, really interesting. So, there you have chicken cacciatore and roasted potatoes. We last did this with McLuhan's Restaurants for the Holiday Express when we worked at St. Francis in Philadelphia. Yes. And uh, it was very, very well received. And we thought we'd have fun with it uh, tonight and do it for, for you folks. Uh, my lovely sister told me, do something quick, do something easy. Everyone's talking about quick and easy food. This is really, really easy. And I hope you uh, try this dish and you enjoy it. Thanks, Michael. So a woman named Sue said, hi, I'm a friend of your sister and you probably don't remember this, but about 10 years ago I went out to dinner with Kelly and the kids at a restaurant you were working at. My daughter at the time expressed that she wanted to be a chef and you kindly let her see your kitchen at the restaurant. I'm proud to say she graduated from Johnson & Wales about two years ago and now is a chef in Providence, Rhode Island. That is awesome, Sue. <laughs> I, was, was, that a, was that at the Robinson Alehouse? Maybe? Yeah, that was uh, she said about 10 years ago, so not no, Robinson. No, so it wasn't at Robinson's. That was five years ago. So Your house? I do I do remember uh, I remember meeting your daughter, but it's awesome that she's cooking in P-Town. A lot of great stuff happens in, uh, in Rhode Island, and that's great. I hope she's doing well. Danny Kane says he can't, can't wait to hear you tell him to hurry up again. <laughs> I can't wait either, Danny. And everyone just said it looks delicious. And and wondering what you might cook next week. Someone asked for short ribs. Someone asked for pork chops the other day. Was short ribs Sam Kulak's husband? It was. It was Sam Kulak. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. It was Sam. Uh, Sam Kulak got married at the Robinson Ale House, and they we they wanted uh, short ribs uh, uh, at their reception. Uh, I, I plan on doing pork chops uh, <laughs> next week. We have a great pork chop on the menu, a dark and squirmy pork chop uh, at the Rum Runner. I plan on doing that. Of course, we're going to do whatever whatever you folks want us to do, whatever can be helpful. Um, yeah, we're here for you, and we look forward to, to sharing more of this uh, as we go on. Hopefully, it ends rather soon. Uh, I know each and every person that's in my industry, uh, I can't wait for it to end. And, uh, you know, I miss uh, everyone that has graced the walls of this restaurant, and for that matter, uh, all of McLuhan's restaurants and everyone I've worked with in the industry over these last 20 years. Uh, I know it's tough right now, but we're going to get through it, and we're going to get to the other side. And let's just let's just be healthy and uh, and and get better. Well, thanks, Mike. Thank you. All right. See ya.